Hey guys and girls, I'm Espen Croft, and today we're going to take a look at the Emu Proteus. And although there's lots of other YouTube videos and information about this module online, I thought it was time I made a video about that too, because I remember very well back in 1989 when this module was released in Norway, it had quite the impact to pack all the good sounds from the Emulator 3 into this little package was quite the revolution and it sold in buckloads. The specs for these were also pretty nice. You have 4 megabytes of internal ROMs, 192 presets, you can override 64 of them to store your own uh, programs. You have 125 tones that can be assembled and edited at any time. And you can pretty much customize the sound to sound exactly how you like. You're not bound to use this only as a preset module. You can edit quite a lot in this, actually. I'm going to show this in a minute. Emulator 3, Emulator 2, the Emaxes, they were quite expensive. Enormously expensive here in Norway, where I lived. So for a budget musician, that was out of the questions. So the Proteus, that was the thing to have multi-timbral, so you could use it in a, in a live situation with all the different sounds. It had six outputs and you could also uh, run an effects loop within those outputs. So you have it all actually in these modules. And before we continue, I'd like to congratulate my sponsor for this video, PCBWay. They're celebrating their sixth anniversary and PCBWay is a company that can deliver custom-made circuit boards for your projects. You should definitely check out their website, I'll leave a link for you in the video description. Some of my gear does indeed actually have circuit boards from PCBWay in them. So let's check out some of the sounds and how you can edit sounds as well.
and one of the patches I played in this demo is that preset 64 Espen Craft soft pad. That is made up of two tones, two samples that I've edited and I'll show you how I did it. Compared to the Kurzweil K expanders that came out about the same time, editing here is much easier. You press the edit button and then you can scroll around the different menus. And many of these menus will be very familiar to anyone that has used uh, an Emacs or emulator before. So let's go to the top and see what we've got. And like in the Emacs, a program, a preset, consists of two tones, two samples, called instrument pre or instrument sec. And now I'm changing the sample of the first instrument, tone or sample, that's the same here. And let's go for the second one as well. And we can blend these afterwards, balance them together. So let's go for a um, more bright sound in this second sample, a bass sound. The key ranges can be set for both these samples. And the volumes can be set for these two samples. And this, this is where you balance the sounds. You're only hearing one of the sounds right now, I'll get to that in a second, why that is so. You can pan those sounds and you can tune them coarsely or you can tune them fine-tune them, so you can get some um, detuning, that's an old trick, can't go too far. That's okay. The chorus is a nice addition, but uh, be aware that using chorus will take away polyphony. The Proteus 1 has a 32 voice polyphony. But using chorus will eat up from that. If you want one sample to come in late, you can use the delay mode to delay that from the other one. You can of course reverse samples and play with the start point, etc. Like on any sampler. And now we come to the envelopes and now this sound will start to change its appearance because I'm going to change the attack portion of my samples. And now it's going from being a soft pad to be a kind of percussive instrument, a bell type, bell synth, if you, if you want. So that's the first sample, that's the second one. Change the attack on that. And this ADSR envelope menu is very similar to the ones in the Emacs. You can crossfade the samples in and out if you want to from each other. Choose the direction of that, the balance of that, the amount of that. And you have LFOs. You can do quite a lot with velocity, pressure sensitivity if you have a, a keyboard with aftertouch. And you can also link up to four presets to make up one big giant sound if you want to. That's very cool. And you can save your preset, of course. For the next couple of years, the Proteus would come out in different revisions, souped up, more memory, more presets, more sounds. But at the core, they're very fast and efficient modules that sounds really good with a pedigree from Emu. That pretty much wraps it up for today. Uh, I have these Proteuses on loan from Anders Jensen, thanks Anders. And they don't go for very much these days on the internet, so you should definitely check them out if you haven't already. Some people don't think very highly of these, but I think they're great for, especially for the price you get them for today. And some of the sounds are really excellent and can enhance any synth pop or pop production even today, especially if you're going for that retro style. As always, I'm Espen Croft and I thank you for watching and stay tuned for more exciting videos. Cheers! 
And a big, big thanks goes out to David Ryle, Felix Bowman, Jan Tuchek, Carl Bate, Stefan Laforce, Nathan Furman, Rich Jones, Tail Trap, Teddy McSnuggins, Matt Phillips, Creating Tracks, and Anders Jensen. Thanks, guys. You rock. Thanks, guys. You rock.